Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Well, it's that time of the year. Weather is slowly getting warmer here in the Northeast. And no matter where you are, you're thinking about a change. It's officially spring. We want to change up our homes, our living spaces, our workspaces, and we're going to look at the rules of design today from a certified interior designer. What she thinks when she first walks in a room, how she's going to change it, that perspective. We're getting inside her head. She is Rebecca Marks, and she's back with us today. Welcome. How are you? Good, Steve. How are you? I'm good. I'm excited to do this today because I want to I want to live through your eyes when you walk in a room and what you're thinking how you're taking it apart, how you're going to put it back together for a client. Um, and there are, do I have that right, that there are rules of design that you follow? Yeah, so there are some rules that we learn in school. And I get, I'm going to give them to you today. Not all of them. Sure. <laughs> because I got to keep some of my back pocket. No. Yeah, it's not, it's not giving up the secret sauce. Not going to happen. I might, I might get some of that out of her, but we'll see where we go with that. There you go. Uh, all right, so... In no particular order, what would be rule number one? The most important one, right? Function. What's the function of the space? Mm. Obviously, you may have a living room and you're like, well, it's a living room. Yeah, but what do you do in that living room? You know, are we reading? Are we just lounging, watching movies? Is it like a more like a family room? Is it more like a formal room where you're going to have, you know, gatherings and you know with uh grown-ups or our kids gonna be involved in the space so the function is super important before you buy anything you select any colors before anything else make sure you know what the room is for um like i said and sometimes you think it's it's the living room but what do you do in your living room not everyone does the same thing sure so um so you really want to get into what the family dynamics are what is it that you do or don't do in that space? Because if you do a lot of reading, you want to have enough lighting, comfortable seating where, you know, if you're one of those who likes to sit up and kind of like like get comfortable in a chair, or mm -hmm. are you one of those who like to like lay down and lounge on a couch while you're reading? So it's very important to know those kind of dynamics. That's why your interior designer kind of becomes your best friend. Because we have to learn all this intriguing things about your dynamic as a family. And so we can properly decorate and design the space. You're so right. Because everybody has a different purpose for pick the living room. Some people, it's their entertainment room. It's the TV. It's movies. Mm -hmm. that, that, <laughs> here's the funny part. I hardly even watch TV. I hard, I just don't, either I don't have time or I get bored or I set an appointment, like I'm going, I'm going to watch that movie tonight. And I have like tons of stuff, tons of channels. I, it's going to, and what do I do? I pick up my phone and then I just kind of just gravitate away. However, any place I've ever lived in, it's got to have a great TV and a kick butt sound system. It's always been me. <laughs> it's my thing. Um, but other people, it's not about the entertainment in their living room. Like you said, it's their, I just want to feel comfortable. I want to put my feet on that ottoman. I'm going to read a book. I'm going to you know, do whatever. Um, or some people may say, I'm going to eat. I'm, I'm going to eat in front of my TV. So therefore, you got to accommodate right. for that. So I'm detecting from you that the starting process within these rules is you're like a CSI investigator. You're like CSI Rebecca. You got to get all the details before you even, you know, move any, oh, any yeah. point forward, right? Yes, exactly. And I literally have about a two page questionnaire that I sit down with my clients and ask all these kind of general questions that allow me to dig a little deeper. Because if I tell you, what do you want in your space? So what's your favorite color? You know, it's kind of like when people ask you, what's your favorite song, you know, and you sit there and can't think of a single song, forget your favorite, you can't even think of one title of a song or a movie. So in order not to put you in that spot, I go through all these series of questions that allow me to see what it is that you like, what it is that you don't like, what is it that you're going to do in that space and that kind of stuff. So from there, then I start looking at the room. So I haven't, right, so we, we start with that. I have not even looked at this room at this point to figure mm -hmm. out where I'm going to put furniture. So I don't even know what kind of furniture I need. 
<laughs> so after that, then I'm looking at the room and I start looking at a couple of things, traffic patterns and focal points. Does the room mm. already architecturally have a focal point? Is there a fireplace? Is there like a beautiful window, large window that gives to like woods? Or maybe you have an oasis in your backyard, you know, that, you know, you want to kind of make the focal point of the room. Mm. Or maybe it's just like a bedroom and it doesn't have any focal points. So you want to create one, which usually in a bedroom, the bed is the largest piece. So it becomes the focal point. Um, in an office, I enjoy, especially with my more like my executive clients, I enjoy making their desk, making a beautiful desk according to the style that they enjoy, and then working around it. Because when you walk into an office, the first thing you do is look for the desk, because you know that meeting or, you know, work is going to take around that one piece of furniture. It's kind of the same with the bed. You walk into a bedroom and the first piece that you look for is the bed. <laughs> so that is your focal point. I love what you said about the focal point in the fireplace, because you could take a look at that and say, you know, it's it's this you know red brick old school fireplace. I'm not really a fan. Sometimes it can it can work within the room, but you could take a look at that and say, and I, I, I'm not the designer, but look at it and say, you can paint that white. You can yep. change it up and really maybe modernize it or make it uh, more minimalistic, even though it's brick, you know, typically right. that doesn't go with the min minimalistic style, but there's so many things you could do, but that's your job to, I guess, look at these things and say, I guess it's your assets. Hey, you've got that. You've got that. Like, you know, we look at our bodies, you know, it's like, look right. at me. I'm like, my legs are pretty good, you know? <laughs> Arrest me, I don't know. Exactly, <laughs> and it's true, right? And, like, you already have a natural focal point with the fireplace, so let's use it. That is not your style. You necessarily don't like it. Maybe it won't work with whatever style you want to bring into that space. Okay, but you already have it there. Yeah. So, I mean, changing the facade of the fireplace is a lot less expensive than having to remove it and create another focal point in the space. Mm. So, so Yeah. Right. So, on the all right. So we make that one of the rules. How about the, how about another rule that uh, you adhere to? So traffic patterns. Okay. Right? So I see the fireplace. And for example, you may have, um, you walk into, you walk into a house and you have an opening to the living room on one side. And let's say the li living room is like a square shape. So you have the opening and right next to that opening on that wall, um, you have another opening into the dining room, for example. So you have this imaginary diagonal line from one opening to the next that should not be obstructed with any furniture or decor or anything else. You want to have a clear path, a clear path of uh, traffic flow. Okay. So you can go from the entryway into the living room to the dining room without having to move around any furniture. So that's what we call a traffic pattern or um, the flow of traffic. Um, so you want to have that clear path. And when you, it's almost, I think, I feel like sometimes we naturally do it or you do it without realizing and design is used a lot. If you think about a kitchen, usually like the entry of the kitchen and either it be the garage or the backyard or something, there is like, it's almost like a hallway. Right. And then you have like the island and maybe it's a U shape or L shape. It doesn't matter what shape it is. The kitchen. There is like this almost like feels like a hallway from one entry point to the other. And that will be a traffic pattern. So I have two thoughts on that. And it goes back to something we talked about, I think, on the first first podcast when we got together in that it's a flow of energy and energy is everything. And you need a constant flow when there's blockage. It's not just a hassle going around it. It's blocking the flow of energy, number one. And number two, even when they design, like my friends and I used to say, great bar has a flow. You can do, or we would say, we can do laps. We can go, you know, you can walk around and there's a free flow. Let me you know, pass by this area. Let me see who's over here. There's always a continuous flow of traffic. So I totally get what you're seeing, saying, but a lot of times we don't realize that, you know, we've... <laughs> If we get stuck in our ways, 
And we don't see, oh, if I just pivot the couch that way, what a difference I would make. Exactly. Right. And like I've covered for traffic patterns where I was talking more like from the design point of view of a home or a kitchen. But we're, when we talk about furniture, you're right. So you want to lay furniture in a certain way so you're not blocking it. Um, I worked for a family that have an Airbnb and they thought they needed like all new furniture and stuff. And I was able to just by simply moving furniture that they already had, I just read the move the furniture around and tell them put the bed here, put this there, da da, you know, and they were like, Oh my god, it looks like a completely different house mm. because they had all the correct pieces. They just didn't properly lay them because there was no flow of traffic. So you want to keep a clear path while the traffic flows. Um you want it when you're laying down furniture and placing the core items, little tables, plants, anything like that, it should not obstruct any traffic pattern. And you want to keep all the openings about three feet on each side. So 36 inches on each side of a door or an opening, a wall opening, clear. Mm. That's also kind of like a rule of thumb. <laughs> like mm. You don't want to have anything that can obstruct that space. I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm going through my place and, and seeing, you know, what's there. If I walk into my bedroom... I probably need to move the dresser a little further away from the door. And I have plenty of room. There's, there's you know, in that, that's a bigger room. Um, but wow. All right. You know, I'm sure that people can hire you even on a virtual level to analyze their layout. Let's say they're oh, not okay. looking for a redesign. Just, I want to change up. What do I do? What do I do, Rebecca? What, what, and, and you could take care of that. Yes. Yeah. And, and that's what I love about this simple rules, right? Um, between your coffee table, talking about pattern, right? Uh, between your coffee table and your sofa, there should be a, I love two feet of distance between the edge of the coffee table and the edge of the couch. That way you're not tramping over each other, but you're not reaching out too far to play something on the table. Still belongs to the living room setting. Um, but two feet, I find it as like the ideal amount of mm. space between your couch and your um coffee table so that's yeah so that's one of the things and then between the wall and the bed if you have a smaller bedroom between the wall and the bed keep it about three feet that will allow for good traffic flow and you don't feel so cramped in there i remember when i first moved into where i am now i I struggled with the couch. I didn't know where to put it. And I moved it around. I think it's in the best possible position it's in. But in that, it's right next to the window and uh, and blinds and things like that. Like there's just that much space. And if I give it more space on the other side, I don't have a good flow there. So it, there's, there's so many variables involved here. Uh, and to the point where my head hurts, Rebecca, just what do I do? <laughs> <laughs> right, and think. sometimes builders don't make our jobs easier because we've become a very uh, asymmetric society when it comes to building because they're just trying to fit this piece in there because you know we need if the demand goes up in bedrooms so they just try to fit that many bedrooms whether it is design sound or not <laughs> that's why sometimes if you're building sometimes it's better just to hire a designer with your builder so we can work together to build and design the best possible home for you, for your function of, uh, you know, for your family. Right. So, right. Um, but in that, then you have balance. So when you were talking about your couch and the window and all that, I just kept thinking balance. So you want to have a good proportion in the room. And like I said, a lot of times you don't have that symmetry in a space because maybe you have the door on one side and the window is on the other and it creates a symmetrical environment. And then you walk in and you're like, I don't even know where to put the like the bed. Like I can't center it. <laughs> mm. So that's where it becomes a little tricky, but you do want to have balance. If for instance, behind me, I have a day bed because my office is also a guest bedroom when people come to visit. So on that side, I have a day bed and a beautiful painting above it. 
And then on this side, I have my desk with a working table for when I am drafting plans and uh, my file cabinet. So I kind of balance the room out. Everything is not in one wall. Everything is kind of distributed with like even weight and we call it visual weight. When you look at a room and you look at both walls, they both have the, um, the same amount of weight in it. So it's like you put a couch on one side and you put two chairs on the other with a little table in the middle. Now you're balancing it out. If you put just one couch and one chair, then it kind of feels like the couch side is heavier um, than the other side. So you kind of want to even everything out when it comes to balance. Balance, I would think, is key. And even, even contrast, if you're looking at a couch, let's say it's a lighter couch to add some pop color or some darker darker tones to it um yes yeah this, there's a lot this goes deep <laughs> in know? contrast it's one of our rules it, it's it is a rule it is a rule yes, oh, wow. yes. All right. you yeah. want to balance it out and then contrast it it's kind of it's uh, this is why i love what i do <laughs> because it's so fun and when and when people are listening they're going like there is no way that i can do all of this um my best advice is when you're trying to eat an elephant, everybody has to eat it one bite at a time. So you just kind of can write this stuff down. All these steps, right? You want to see the function of the room, focal points, find traffic pattern, balance the room out. And then you just go one by one. Look at the space and go one by one. It's like, all right, oh, here is a focal point. Oh, here is a traffic pattern. And next thing you know, you're designing your own space uh like a pro <laughs> so. i find myself loving all of this very interested in it, in in it but at the same time i get to a point where most people are so deep in it that i you i can't decide that i can't that couch there but where i would throw it to you oh I, yeah and i, and I truly exactly mean that where i feel like the next one when we get into the scale of things so um, you go to the furniture store, you go to a showroom and you see a beautiful table and a beautiful chair and a beautiful sofa. And then you go like, oh my God, and they work well together and it's going to be perfect. And then you get a deliver in your space and you realize that it's too small for your large space or it's too big you mm. know, for your tiny living room. And you're like, oh, man. So that is where scale comes into play. Not only do you want to make sure that the scale is good between the pieces, but also within the space. So you have to have like double vision, like really close to each other, but then far away as a whole. What does it look like? What about shopping? I know, you know, we're talking rules here, so maybe I'm pressing the pause button, but I'm kind of curious how the shopping aspect of all of this happens does somebody go with you do you make recommendations what what usually happens there so i can do a little bit of everything i've done it to where i just design a space with very um generic looking items but with the colors and the combinations like the palette that i recommend from me sitting down with a client and then they can go out and purchase it themselves or i go to the places I gather the select a few a selected few with that go within the design plan, and that, then I'll bring. I do not go to showrooms with my clients without me first looking at the pieces, because people get distracted, they lose the image of what we're trying to do and accomplish. And I'll spend six days in the store <laughs> trying to reel them in every time they see something. Ooh, but it looks how pretty. Like, that could work here. And it's like, no, come here. <laughs> and you don't do all the shopping for all the pieces in one store. At least I don't. Uh, most professionals don't. Um, you go shopping at different places to gather that. We were talking about it, I want to say, a couple weeks ago. Like, that magazine cover look, not the catalog cover. So when you hire an interior designer, you get that magazine cover look where all the pieces are different, but they all work together. And in order to achieve that, a lot of times you have to go to multiple stores. So when I go to a place with my client, I'm only showing them two pieces anyways. Okay. There is just something about a room, like to your point, the magazine cover, where everything just looks like it goes together and it feels good. 
like you just feel like this positivity, the energy coming off of it. Last week, I helped a friend paint her daughter's bedroom. Um, it was for her daughter's birthday. We were on a kind of a crunch. She said, I need help. Can you help me? I'm like, yeah, I'll be over there. Um, it took six hours. Uh, <laughs> yeah. just, a, just a bedroom. Uh, mainly because I had to navigate around furniture and stuff. And I love painting. I don't even use painter's tape. I cut in. I love it. Great. And spackling right. it's all good. It's fun. For me, it's fun. It's like an art project. I didn't know what was going in that room. I didn't know what the final was going to be. And she sent me, she texted me some pictures of it. And I had that feeling just what you said. And even wrote back, it looks like, like it's on a magazine or it's, uh, you know, on a website because yeah. what she put in there, you know, the furniture and how it all worked with the color on the wall. And if I, the suggestion from the colors that you said a few times back when we talked that are in now, I kind of persuaded her to go a little bit lighter, um, <laughs> but it had that look, it had that look to it that like, whoa, that's the same room. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like I didn't, I had no idea. Cause when I left it, it was 1230 AM and oh, there was, right. you know, stuff all thrown all over the place. But you know, this, uh, just that, that vibe that you get from it, it just, it just, when it, when it works, it feels so good. Yeah. So good. And I keep up with, uh, with the showrooms. I visit them just to see what they have in store. You always want to say like, I'm going to market in a few weeks. Um, over in High Point, and I'll always sit right like that's a big one. Sit on your furniture. It's kind of like when you're buying a mattress, you don't just buy a mattress, especially one that you're gonna you're gonna be the one sleeping on. You don't just buy a mattress and hope to God that it's the furnace, you know, the furnace that you want. You just sit there and kind of bounce on the mattress, and it's like eh, it's too bouncy, you know, and go to the next one until you find the one. It's the same with a couch when you're purchasing chairs, couches, all that. Stuff. You want to be able to test it out. And my level of firmness and comfort on a chair is not the same one as my clients. Um, same with the height, right? I can look at a perfect chair, and but my clients are taller than usual. So when he sits, it feels like he's sitting on a little stool. <laughs> and mm. he's like, yeah, this is not going to work. So we got to find different pieces. So I do, for a lot of stuff, I can get away just with like a you know, sending them a link or sending them pictures and explaining them what it is. But when it comes to like sit down pieces, I do like bringing them along so they can sit down and test it out and see if it's good enough for them. Cool. Um, we're out of time. Did we hit the, a, a number of the major rules? Yes, we did. I cool. think the only one really left was just details. Your home, tell your story, put, mm. you know, whatever makes you, you in that home and i guess that story can be told by let's say things like uh the photo wall mm -hmm. um, maybe artifacts or things from your family that you know or i mean it, it could be things you buy but it's you it's it, it resonates right. with you and you can be i don't know maybe you go to new york city and find this beautiful art piece and you gotta have it so yep. take it you know, wrap it up, they'll pack it out for you and you mm -hmm. take it home and you put it up on a wall and it becomes it's something that you love, something that you picked. And then when somebody walks in and they look at it and say like, oh my God, that's beautiful. You can go ahead and give them the story. Oh my God, it's from a trip to New York City and we're walking around, you know, art gallery and I had to have it. And here it is. What do you think? You know, you and know it becomes part of your story. I've you took the words out of my mouth. I was going to say everything has a story, everything right down to your couch, you know, yeah. look, look, you know, and I'm realizing this now I was just talking about my couch before there was a story when I first moved in <laughs> and I would have friends come over and I say, what do you think of it like this? What about like this? You know, we, we, <laughs> if you're going to watch TV, would you be comfortable? And I can make decisions on my own, but it was like, I want to get everybody's feedback. You know, maybe I'm missing something and that's where you come in. You're the feedback. Exactly. You're you're <laughs> looking at it from an eye, eyes of a professional and what really works. Um, uh, Rebecca, what's your website? How do we connect with you? Um, BlueLilySpace.com. The color blue lily is L-I-L-L-I-E. Space.com. And there you'll find the contact me page. You'll find projects, services, everything. You make design fun. Thank you. It's yeah. fun. I love it <laughs> too. And, I, and your passion is like off the scale. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, Steve.
Thanks. We'll be right back. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcasts on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house. And there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's. It's going to be okay. 